It's that time again. Uh-oh, look, Splat has something on him. Here, I'll fix him. There. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome. This is Leslie from GoToKitchens.com. Welcome, everybody that's jumping in here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Diva for Hire. Gosh, I haven't taken time this week to memorize your names yet. I have them all written down. i got to memorize your names. So please, when you comment, hi, it's good to see you. Hi, <laughs> please put your name in there, and I will try to remember your name as we go along. Hey, Gary Lee, it's good to see everybody. Let's turn this baby around. What a week it has been, but I'm really tempted to sing the song. I <laughs> hide a splat too, there he is. I'm really tempted to sing the song. I think we're alone now. <laughs> because there's not anybody around. It's just me and you guys, and we are in the kitchen cooking it up. I'm actually gonna turn on my stove to start a little preheat here. And today we are making a stuffing dressing replacement. But you guys, this is an amazing recipe. And I want to encourage you, you may not want to make it for Thanksgiving. And I understand because you want to go with your traditional. Uh, <laughs> so he's in the background somewhere. Um, he's in a shop, I think, actually. But I understand that you may not want to replace your traditional recipe for uh, your Thanksgiving dressing, and I get that. I totally get that. But I want to encourage you to make this recipe between now and Christmas and see if your family doesn't love it because it is a super yummy, yummy recipe, and I'm super excited to share it with you. We're going to do a lot of bread replacements with whole grain replacements like a quinoa. Um, we're actually going to use some turkey sausage. Um, it has a mate. Look at all these ingredients over here. It has an amazing flavor profile. So I know Lisa, he's gone. He's back in Dallas. <laughs> he has to go to work for me now. <laughs> I know it sounds amazing, right? Look at all those ingredients. We got dried cranberries and acorn squash and onions and apples and walnuts and parsley and quinoa and turkey sausage. Hello, it's gonna be amazing. So <laughs> let me take a quick second to introduce myself. My name is Leslie. You're watching Lunch with Leslie at GoToKitchens.com. I do this broadcast every weekday at noon mountain time. So what does that mean? That means I'm not gonna be here tomorrow and I'm not gonna be here Sunday, but I'll be back on Monday. Um, and I do this every, every weekday. So without fail, except yesterday, I was late, but I was on, I came on. Even after my long morning, I came on with you guys and made you some cranberry sauce. So this is a great addition to that cranberry sauce, by the way. Amazing. If you don't mind, and if you haven't done it already, and if you have done it already, thank you for doing it. But if you haven't, there's a little guy right down here with a white bald head. If you will just click that little guy, it will give you an option to share out to your... <laughs> thank you so much. That's so sweet, Kathy. Um, it'll give you a chance to share out uh, to your followers and to make a post out onto Twitter. I will actually see that post out onto Twitter. Thank you very, very, very much for doing that. You guys are awesome sauce. So let's make some dressing. Oh, my website, gotokitchens.com. It's right here in the title of the scope. There's nothing for sale over there. I am not trying to sell you the thing. The only thing that I wanted is I want you to go over. Oh, awesome. Love it. Woohoo. Love it. Love that you've started that. Um, I want you to go over and I want you to have a look at go to kitchens and the only thing that I want you to buy is I want you to buy into your own health so there you go I am out of my fancy pants clothes I've been had I changed clothes day before yesterday I changed clothes five times because <laughs> they wanted me in different clothes every shot <laughs> I mean every every time we filmed they wanted me in different clothes and I had to do all these stand-in things and blah 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 and I had to change clothes I had to change clothes five times five times I had to change clothes crazy it was crazy so anyway there we go if you are a VIP, you can go on the VIP page right now on Facebook and there are some behind the scenes photos on there of what's been happening this week. If you're a VIP on the newsletter on Sunday, I'm gonna reveal what's going on so you guys can come out of the dark. If you're not a VIP, go to gotokitchens.com, sign up, it says VIP access. You only need an email address. I'm not gonna pitch anything to sell you or anything like that. Go over, become a VIP, then you're gonna get a link to the Facebook page that's the VIP lounge totally free you'll get that link you can go to the VIP page ask to join and you'll get to know what's going on with go to kitchens all the time so lots of exciting stuff happening so right here this is the first thing <laughs> this is VIP baby 
Me and Splat. Me and Splat. He's, I need to put, I'm going to, I'm going to go change my picture and we're going to make Splat the mascot over on the VIP page. I kind of have a lame photo up there anyway as the heading and I am doing, I'm <laughs> doing Splat and Mason. There is a Mason jar in the scope, so you won't be disappointed. There it is. Mason, Mason jar in the scope. <laughs> we're going to use its entire contents today. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I have had my uh, my stove on uh, on about a three here, just preheating. Okay, so it's nice and preheated. Um, before I came on, I actually made a quick turkey sausage. This recipe will be on my website uh, probably by weekend. So, um, but I made a quick turkey sausage. This is a, just a ground turkey that I have actually made into a sausage flavor. Um, I will include this recipe on the website. So, and some how to's how to make that. It's super simple. You're gonna wanna make sausage patties with it after you've learned because it is so stinking yummy. I could eat that whole pan just standing here. It is so good and so good for you as well. All right, so my pan is preheated. That's good. I'm gonna take uh, one fourth a cup of, of uh, thank you, Evan. I'm gonna take one fourth of a cup of extra virgin olive oil and put that down in my pan. Then I'm going to add my onions. This is uh, half of a yellow, you can't see that. Let's put it over here, I'm still learning. This is half of a yellow onion diced. We're gonna put that right down in here and we're gonna saute that onion. And I'm gonna turn up my heat for this part of it. So yesterday, we were filming in a kitchen store, and this was yesterday morning, and <laughs> they were not rolling. They were not rolling, and this is not where I bought Splat. I did not buy Splat in this kitchen store. I actually bought Splat at Sur La Tab, but we were not rolling, and um, I happened to see a whole rack of Splats. And I go running over, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all the Splats. And it was very natural, I mean, because I was genuinely excited to see all of these uh, these spatulas <laughs> on a rack all together. There was a whole family. There was like a big family tree of them. And I was so excited. And they're like, can you do that again? Really? Really? You want me to do that again? Oh, my gosh. How am I going to do that and be natural at that whole thing? Crazy talk. Anyway, I had to do it again. I don't think I was as good the second time because I was genuinely excited the first time. All right, so we have our olive oil and our, our onions down in here, and we are gonna saute those until they are soft. I have my heat on my stove at about a six. I know, it's really funny. I was like, what did what? Oh, and it's so hard because they make you, like you do something funny and they're like, can you do that again? N no, I can't do that again. That's crazy. Anyway, not so good at that stuff. Good at some things, not so good at that thing. Um, okay, so we're gonna saute those. They smell amazing. This is half of a yellow onion. I'm looking at my recipe, so forgive me. Um, I only make this a couple times a year, and so I do need to refer to my recipe. So we're gonna do that. Um, I did the sausage already, blah, 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 onions. Okay, all right, yeah, so we're just gonna do this for a little while. I know. Well, I told them, I said, with me, you just need to rise. I just told them, I said, with me, you just need to have the camera on all the time because you never know what's going to fly out of my mouth. And if you want to, if you want to hear me say it, like, honestly, then yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that you will ever be able to see what I just did this weekend. Um, we'll see. We'll see if they release the footage to me. I think I'm just going to have a temporary link that is just privy to me and not privy to my audience, but it's possible that they will let me release the, um, I know we'll see. It's possible that they will let me release, um, release the link out to my VIP since you're a small crowd. So no, Evan, you could never do that. I don't see how you could do that. <laughs> no, we did, Roz, we did, uh, we did three days of filming. I think we did like five sets. We did five different sets and, um, and they, they are, they are getting it down to three minutes. So we have like five hours of video and it has to go down to three minutes because it's a marketing promo. Um, we have to get it down to three minutes. So yeah, crazy town. It was a whole new experience. I've, the only experience I have with being on camera is the little bit of YouTube work that I've done and this and some family videos. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only experience I have <laughs> with being on camera. So anyway, it was fun. I enjoyed it. 
was a little stressful, but it was fun. I think the most stressful part of it all is having to get ready for it. It's like have your makeup perfect and have your hair perfect and have, you know, the perfect clothes and the perfect jewelry and make sure your nails are clean and cut and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's a lot, it's a lot to think about. So you are going to cook your onions until they get translucent. The camera guy loves you. Actually, I love the camera guy. He's amazing. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maura, for saying that. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I'm hopeful for big things to come because of this little marketing promo that we just made. So, um, but yeah, no, Zach is great. He's actually, he's only 22 years old. I kept saying 23. He's actually only 22 and he's very talented. I looked at some of the footage. I refused to look at the footage until we were done filming. Um, and I looked at like a minute and a half of it just so that I could see what was all going on. And uh, he's very talented in his shots and I'm really excited to see what they come up with. He's actually doing all the editing too. So, so it should be pretty fun. Excited. I'm supposed to see what, I guess they call it a fat cut, whatever that means. I don't even know what that means, but a fat cut is like five minutes long. So yeah, I'm supposed to see that this week. You guys are popping in and out. Am I, is my signal bad? If it is, we're just going to have to wait till replay since I'm already started with my cooking, but yeah, cause <laughs> I hope not. Cause there's some real goofy stuff in there. Okay, good. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you. You went and signed up for VIP. I love it. You're awesome. Awesome, awesome. You guys rock. Rock and roll. Okay, so my onions have a good sizzle on them. I'm going to lower my heat and add my next ingredient. My next ingredient. What is my next ingredient? My, I'm still looking here. Goofy is the best. I know. Well, I've got that down. <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> okay, good. Hi, Lisa. Good. Um, okay, so now we are adding, gosh, I can't even read my own handwriting. It's just nuts that I can't read my own handwriting. Now I'm going to add the squash. Yes, very good. Very, very good. Roz has got it. Ding, ding, ding. Because Roz is, oh, there's a big piece of skin in there. I'm taking you out. You do not live there anymore. Garbage bowl. Um, yes, Roz, you win. Roz is a cook and she knows what comes next. <laughs> she is a sous chef, actually. She knows what's next. Okay, so when I just added the squash, the smell just went kapow. It's a good question, Lisa. What kind of squash is that? <laughs> it's acorn squash. I'm sorry. It was one acorn squash. Um, no, I do not compost. I use all of my leftovers for um, the veggie stock. Gary, did you miss that whole scope about veggie stock? Uh, but no, it is, a, it is a whole acorn squash. So here's my tip about acorn squashes. This is going to cook for three minutes, by the way, or about, until it's soft. Um, here's my tip about acorn squashes. If you get an acorn squash and it's hard as a rock, you're going to get an acorn squash and it's going to be hard as a rock. <laughs> My favorite tip is to poke some holes in it with a knife and stick it in the microwave. I know, nuking your food, probably not the best idea, but I needed a shortcut. So poke some holes in it, stick it in the microwave for about two to three minutes. It will actually help loosen up the skin. So, um, no, not really. I mean, oh, you mean scraps from those scraps? Yes. And I'll probably do a scope this afternoon and show you what I'm going to do with those scraps. So, yeah, because I pulled out scraps from the veggie stock. Uh, of course, there's scraps from that, and I'm going to show you. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll soften up your acorn squash and make it a lot easier to um, to manage in your pot or to dice because they're, they're pretty tough. I mean, getting a knife through an acorn squash um, can be a tedious job, and then peeling it to peel it and dice it like I have it here is even a bigger job. Gosh, I keep seeing big pieces of skin that I left out in, though big green pieces of skin. I mean, it's not going to kill anybody, but it doesn't make it very pretty. All right. So now we have super yumminess going on in there. I'm going to just let that cook for just a second and quit beating it up with my spoon. Splat's beating it up. So let's see what's next. What goes in there next? The next thing that I am going to add in is the apples. 
I know, apples, crazy, right? This is two medium uh, Granny Smith apples that I have cut up here. And that's what's that's what's gonna give it that tart, sweet. You're gonna get a lot of, a little bit of, not a lot, but a little bit of crunch from that. Um, you're gonna get an extra flavor in there. It's gonna add bulk to the dish so that you're not missing the breadcrumbs. Um, you know, like the big pieces of cornbread and stuff like that, you're not missing that. So this is all just adding bulk. Uh, yes, you could do this with, I think you could do it with any, yeah, I think you could do it with any squash actually, Roz. So yeah, no, good point. Any squash that you can find that's in season and super yummy. Of course, there's squashes everywhere right now. They are absolutely everywhere. Now, when we go from stove here, we go from stove to, um, to oven, you're actually going to be cooking this a little bit more. I'm sorry, I missed that. The apples are not peeled. No, I did not peel the apples. I actually left the uh, the peelings on the apples. I did not want them to get mushy. So yeah, I left the peels on. They're not peeled. I think that's what you asked. Is that right? See that? They are cored and diced. Yep. There you go. Super easy. We are having a Friendsgiving on Sunday. Do you guys have Friendsgivings? <laughs> You know, instead of Thanksgiving, you have Friendsgivings and you do like a pre-dinner. So um, so I make all these non-traditional recipes like this. Yeah, good fiber in the skin, absolutely. Um, but I make, and this is organic apples, by the way. It's one thing that I do not compromise on. They always have to be organic. Um, but you don't have any friends. Yes, you do. But we do Friendsgiving. Um, and we do the Sunday before Thanksgiving. We have all of our friends over. It's, it's a little bit of a tradition. And I make these untraditional recipes like this. And actually, this is one of them I will serve. So I'm making this ahead for Sunday. I will put it in its baking dish, put it in the fridge, and then it'll be ready to go right in the oven, right from the fridge in its baking dish. So... Um, yes, so, all right, my squash is just getting a little soft. That's exactly what I want to happen. So we're going to put the apples down in there. This is just going to add another dimension of smell that is going to make me so happy. I'm going to be so happy right now. There are a lot of ingredients in this recipe. It's no lie. There are a lot of ingredients in this recipe and simple dressing, you know, with the bread and everything doesn't have this many ingredients in it, but this baby is packed with nutrients. I mean, you are getting, you're getting like the whole spectrum of nutrients. You're getting fruit, you're getting veg, you're getting grain, you're getting meats, we're doing some herbs, you're getting nuts. <laughs> Um, you're getting, uh, gosh, I almost, I don't even know. You're not missing. You don't have any dairy. You don't have any bread, nothing like that. This is completely, you could actually make it vegan and not use the, um, not use the turkey, but I'm not a vegan. So, or a vegetarian even. So, but yes, you could, you could not, you could maybe even do a tofu stir in there if you wanted to, if you were eating vegetarian or vegan. So this is just another couple of minutes in here, just so they get a little bit soft and they pick up. You know, really what you're doing here is you're not really you're not really cooking <laughs> the apples or the squash at this point. What you're doing here is you're allowing them to soak up the flavors that are already in the pot. So as we add layers of ingredients, you're allowing these things to soak up the flavors. And you know me, flavor profile is super, super important. I love to take very normal like everyday foods and punch them up and make them something that is extraordinary by putting them together like this recipe. So, so good and so good for you. So good. Friendsgiving, I was talking about Friendsgiving. So I make these untraditional recipes. The only thing that's traditional that we have is turkey and sometimes we don't even, I mean, it usually it's just a turkey breast. It's not the focus of the dinner, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, and I make untraditional uh, dressing and green beans and potatoes and you know we just do all kinds of crazy stuff so it's a lot of fun I have a friend Nanette who she's not going to be here this year but she um she makes uh we were talking about in fact I'm going to ask her about it tomorrow because I may try to make it um a sweet potato souffle does that not sound amazing I want a sweet potato souffle what it's crazy crazy good okay so now my apples have been in here for a few minutes. I will tell you, if I wasn't on this periscope, I would actually let them cook a little bit longer. But I don't want you guys going, seriously, are we still stirring apples? She's still stirring apples, people. So, yes. 
I know, right? Me too, Lisa. I'm, I'm like, you got to hand down that recipe. You don't, you don't say that out loud without giving me that recipe. <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I know, crazy. Uh, no, I will actually be making it myself. We actually have a pretty small group. This Actually, no, my friend is bringing the turkey, so I don't have that burden. Um, but I'm making most things ahead. So really, all it is is just a reheat for me on Sunday afternoon. Um, but I've already made the cranberry sauce. I made it yesterday. Today, I'm making the dressing or the stuffing or whatever you like to call it. Um, she will bring the turkey. I'm actually going to make a... Um, a pumpkin pie with some apple juice. Um, I'm going to make a pumpkin pie. Um, I think that I am going to do, I have a garlic ginger green bean that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to try to check out that souffle. I mean, hello. Amazing. All right. Everything's looking perfectly perfect in there. Can you guys see that? Let me move it over here a little bit. Yeah, perfectly perfect, exactly what I want it to look like. So what's next? Let's look at the recipe. The recipe says, anybody want to guess? Roz, you want to guess what's next? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to add um, some apple juice. That's what the apple juice is sitting here for. That's right, that's exactly right. So this is a dressing and not a stuffing because we will not be stuffing the turkey. So this is Big B's um, organic apple juice. Do not buy one of these and drink the whole thing. If you ever taste it, you're going to want to drink it because it's fabulous. But there's 30, no, there's 60 grams of sugar in this. So don't drink the whole thing. You want creme brulee? Yeah, <laughs> I love creme brulee. Um, so I'm going to pour the apple juice. This is one fourth cup of this apple juice. Oh, no, it's okay. I was just seeing if you wanted to guess what comes next. And you were gone. She was gone. One fourth cup of apple juice, give it a good stir. Just like that. Easy, easy, easy. What's next? Um, okay, so now we are gonna add the quinoa. We're gonna add the quinoa. This is a this is called royal quinoa. I use this particular one because of the colors. Um, the colors actually remind me of when I'm looking at it, it's very important that your eyes are pleased as well as your sense of smell and your sense of taste. And so this quinoa to me looks like maybe the breadcrumbs or the breads that you would be using to make a regular dressing or stuffing. Um, and so I, I really like to use the, the royal quinoa like this, which is all the colors, red, brown, black, white, it's all the colors. This is two cups two cups of quinoa and I'm going to stir that. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. I am going to stir this around and I'm going to continue stirring it because I want to kind of toast up this quinoa a little bit. You know, quinoa is toasted because it will start to pop. You'll get a little bit of a pop. They'll actually pop like popcorn and that's when it's toasted. I almost every single time, I do not soak my quinoa. I don't think I've ever soaked quinoa. There's always, um, <laughs> that's okay. There is always a, tell Scott hi for me. Um, there is always a, um, a recipe that will say that you need to soak your quinoa. I never soak my quinoa. I toast my quinoa. That actually breaks it open a little bit and makes it more uh, available to the liquid and absorbs and makes it plump up and you get those beautiful, I call them fish eyes. <laughs> Too bad. Sorry, Scott. Too bad. So sad. What, I just get my hair? Oh my goodness. I did it yesterday too. Um, yeah. Too bad. So sad. More traditional. <laughs> This is, this is going to be really traditional taste, actually. It has a really, 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 really yummy taste. This is going to serve a lot of people. This is going to serve about 12 people. Hey, Cosmo, it's good to see you. Where have you been? <laughs> That's so funny. Chastie's here. Look at all these people popping in. It's good to see you guys. We're right in the middle of making, um, <laughs> we're right in the middle of making um, a very untraditional dressing. But I was just talking about how nutrient dense this is. You've got your quinoa, you've got your fruits. Oh gosh. <laughs> you got your fruits, you got your veg, you got your, we're going to use some turkey sausage. Um, you've got your herbs, you've got nuts. This has tons and tons of stuff in it. So now that we have added our quinoa and it is actually starting to toast up just a little bit, I can hear it popping in there. 
which is what I want. We are going to use, guess what? I'm sorry. I missed, I missed something. Oh, Lisa, you're going to be on the replay. Okay. Yeah, go watch it. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to want to see what it looks like. I will actually post a picture of the end product on the VIP page tonight. So, um, so yes, <laughs> bye. Um, so this is about, it's a little over two cups of the veggie stock that I made earlier this week. I told you guys that I totally used my stuff. So this is the trashy veggie stock that we made earlier this week, and you'll have to go watch it on catch.me if you want to see it. I got a good seal on this one. We're going to add this whole thing in there. Remember when you're pouring into a pot, if you'll pour against your spoon, this will help prevent it from splattering up on you. Um, yeah. So that is two cups of veggie stock. And now I'm going to do one cup out of the same mason jar. I'm going to do one cup of water. <laughs> no, it's not. Not kombucha. That would be very untraditional. Nope, it's just my veggie stock that I make. All right, so we're looking good in there. We're looking real good in there. Perfectly perfect. I'm going to set that aside. Does it want me to add? I don't think it does. Stir in broth, bring to a boil. Yeah, that's what I thought. Did I miss a step? Hold on. Excuse me just a second. Hold on. Got that, got that. Add rice. Da, da, da. I'm using quinoa, not rice. Okay, yes. So I'm going to bring this up. We are going to return the sausage. This is the sausage that I made earlier. Now I just want to make sure I didn't miss a step and I'm my handwriting so bad. I can read it. I need to write it down for real. Actually, it'll be on the website later. So I made this uh, sausage a little earlier. I'm going to try to get all of these bits down in there. If you want to know how to make this ground turkey sausage, this is turkey sausage. This is not pork sausage. I do not eat pork. Um, but if you want to know how to make this turkey sausage, you can find it on my website uh, this weekend along with this recipe and probably this broadcast. Um, I'm going to add my, this is uh, one cup of dried cranberries. We're going to add those now as well. And we are going to add one cup of rough cut um, walnuts. Those go down in there. Now we are going to add salt and pepper. I am going to be really, really generous with this. Yeah, I just don't eat pork. I just, I don't, pork is not clean to me. It's, you can't, uh, unless I really know the source, like I know exactly who the people are and I used to have that source and I don't anymore and I know their farming practices, um, I do not eat pork. But that's just me. I mean, it's just a personal. Yeah, just my thing. It's just a personal thing. I, I don't eat pork and I don't feed my family pork, so. So this is just a salt and pepper mix. And you can see I'm doing like three fat, fat pinches in here. Actually, I'm gonna do four. I just feel like having more in there. Sometimes you just have to cook on instinct, quite frankly. So I'm gonna cook on instinct today. Now then, I have you can use uh, you can use sage that is not dried. I'm actually using a dried sage today, um, and I am going to put in about two heaping, 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 heaping big tablespoons of sage. We're gonna give that a stir. This right here, what I just did, is what's gonna make it. <laughs> I do, I love, I love salt, so. Can't take it out to taste it, that's okay. I've, I've made this recipe a couple of times. It smells, okay, right now, it smells like Thanksgiving. Dr. Christine! Hello, Christine! All right. This is a beautiful pot of yumminess right down in here. We're gonna bring this to the boil and it is gonna cook for about 10 minutes covered. What are we gonna talk about for 10 minutes? Cause I really wanna show you guys next steps. So, <laughs> so what can we talk about for 10 minutes? So I asked the question earlier, do any of you guys do Friendsgivings? 
Any of you do Friendsgivings where you do like a day before or the weekend before or something? You guys have a Thanksgiving dinner uh, with your friends? We love to do that. It's a lot of fun. We make untraditional recipes that are a nod towards Thanksgiving recipes, but <laughs> it is an awesome idea. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, if you could smell it, it would be worse. Trust me, it smells so good. <laughs> Kim, it smells so good. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. I want to encourage you guys to think about doing it. Um, you can do it in a way where everybody brings something. Um, you know, one year we actually did like a whole Mexican thing. Um, <laughs> leftovers during Sunday football. Yep. Um, we've done all kinds of themes, but really we like the, just the untraditional Thanksgiving foods and it's so much fun and it's really relaxed. It's not like that crazy. It's not that, uh, <laughs> well, it's good to see it anyway. Um, it's not that crazy Thanksgiving vibe that you get, you know, like that whole, oh my gosh, we got to cook and it's got to be perfect and the family's whole here and we only see them like once a year and blah, blah, blah. It's not that whole thing. It's really super relaxed and a lot of fun. Last year, we actually did it on Thanksgiving Day because we have ton we had tons of friends that didn't have anywhere to go. And so um, nobody was leaving town, it seemed like. Thank you for sharing out. Uh, Dr. Christine, if you guys are not following, um, if you're not following Dr. Christine, please follow her. She is a genius and you should be following her. If you like me, you're going to love her. So, um, but yeah, what's our weather going to be like? Um, hopefully like it is today, which is gorgeous. I think it's about 55 and beautiful. <laughs> yes, she is. I agree. Yep, absolutely. Yes. So, um, what? I know what you're amazing. You know it. Uh, maybe you don't know it, but you are amazing. So yes, and she and Lenny just opened up a, a Facebook page that is, I'm, I'm so excited. I haven't, I haven't had time to actually get there, but she opened up a Facebook page with Lenny Motivates. Um, and it is, put it, type it in there, Dr. Christine, type it in there. It's bit.ly Perry group, I think, bit.ly Perry group. I think I'm right. And, um, yeah, and they're offering up uh, a community atmosphere for all of us that are into health and wellness to go check out. So hello, everybody. Welcome in. Whoever invited followers, thank you. There you go. Bit.ly Perry Group. I'm just going to give this a quick look because I can tell that it's not boiling and I really want it to boil. 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 Watch pot never boils. Free fun. That's right. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to go check it out. I just heard about it. I just got the link this morning and I haven't been able to go over and sign up, but I'm totally doing that. So, um, so yes. And if you're interested in what's going on with GoTo Kitchens, because if you've been here all week, I've had a film crew with me all week. And if you want to know what the lowdown is, you need to go over and become a VIP. I'm actually only exposing what's happening with GoTo Kitchens to the VIPs. <laughs> so please. Oh, I miss you too. I'm so sad that I couldn't see you while you were here. Dang, dang, dang. It was too busy. Um, we both have so many great things going on. So, but yeah, so go over, <laughs> I know, beat it up. Come on, pot. Get in the boiling. Um, but yeah, go over and become a VIP. So you go to gotokitchens.com. You click the VIP link. You give me your email address. Then you get a backlink that will send you to the VIP lounge. Then you can see what's going on with Go To Kitchens because I'm going to send out the newsletter on Sunday and give you the lowdown. So if you want to know, you have to go become a VIP. Nobody else will know. I'm not saying it on here. Actually, I'm not allowed to tell a large audience. So, I mean like a large audience like I have on here. So I'm not allowed to do that. So, but I can tell a small audience and I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys what's going on um, so that you can keep me in your thoughts and prayers and thanks, good thoughts and, um, and hope that we can explode this thing wide open. So, because you know, it's always been my goal. It has absolutely always been my goal to help. Mil oh, now we're boiling. Thank you, pot. <laughs> good, good. Um, now we're boiling. Hallelujah. I can tell you from the smells um, that I am feeling like I want to add some fennel, fennel seeds. So I'm going to add a little fennel to this. Fennel gives it that super yummy, savory flavor that we love. <laughs> Go-to kitchens. Actually, G-O, I'm sorry, that would be helpful, right, to have the website. G-O, the number two, kitchens plural. Yeah, G-O, the number two, kitchens plural. I'm just going to add a little fennel in here. Fennel seeds give it that really savory flavor that I love. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, guys. So we're going to pretty much boil this down until we don't have any liquid anymore. So it's going to take a little while. If you want to hang out, we'll hang out. 
<laughs> yeah, so one know if you want to be in the know, you have to go check it out. I mean, maybe you don't care, and that's totally cool. I mean, that's why I'm giving you the option, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, Thanksgiving is just around the corner. It's um, a week from today, actually. I will be in Tucson um, with my brother-in-law, who I think is still here. El Vampire is my brother-in-law. Um, his name is Gary. Everybody say, hi, Gary. Embarrass him. Um, and we're going to be in Tucson with him next week. Super excited about it. Gary is um, buying a house. He's on the house hunt, and so we get to go look at houses with them. It's going to be amazing. Um, <laughs> who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Uh, my name is Leslie. I have a website, go to kitchens.com. I am a health and wellness blogger and primarily I help people heal through uh, food. So that's, that's who I am. My brother-in-law is a vampire? No, I don't think so, but I think he likes them a lot. <laughs> I think he likes vampire like lore. So yes, that's his. Both of his cats were named after famous vampires. So we all have something. Everybody has something. <laughs> where are? Where am I? I'm in Fort Collins, Colorado. Yep. Um, I do have an awesome recipe for green beans for the holidays. It's not traditional though. <laughs> I will I will put that up. I will tell you what. I will put the cranberry recipe. I will put this dressing recipe. I will put the green bean recipe that I use. And if I can nail down that sweet potato, I might at least be able to throw a link to you. That sweet potato souffle, I will do that. So how about that? So you have some good options. You want non-traditional. Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll hand all of those over to you. And uh, I'll do that in one blog post. Um, and I, uh, this weekend, so you guys can see it. I have a lot of work to do this weekend, but that's okay. And I'm taking a knife class on Saturday, so I will actually like cut in front of you guys and not be embarrassed. Yeah, yeah so we'll give you some non-traditional ideas to roll with. It'll be fun. You guys will like it. Ooh, we're boiling now. Oh yeah, now the fennel seed has added exactly, exactly what I was looking for. All right, I'm gonna turn that down a little bit because it is boiling. I got too anxious a minute ago. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I'm taking a knife skills class. So I have to tell you, even though I'm a food blogger, um, oh, this is actually awesome to make for vegetarian. You can just leave the turkey out. I do stay busy. I'm very busy. Yes, I love it though. Um, so, um, but I back to the knife class. So I am a food blogger. I just bought new knives. Um, my husband, they're dirty, but I'll show you anyway. They're filthy. I'm sorry. I was just chopping with them, but he bought me these new uh, Shun knives. And with that, he said, it's cool. I'll buy you some new knives because I love you, but you got to get some knife skills because my knife skills stink. I mean, I can cut obviously and chop and dice, but, I, <laughs> but I'm not, it's not pretty when I'm doing it. It's why I never cut in front of you guys. I hardly ever cut on here. So <laughs> I know they are. He was, it was a very generous gift. They're actually my Christmas gift. Um, and I just got them early because I wanted to have them for the film crew that was just here so yes it was a very generous gift he actually tricked me I thought I was going to have my old hinkles sharpened and we get there and he's like really you're here because I just want you to buy some new knives it was great we had so much fun it was big big fun so he's lovely that way <laughs> does he oh my god mine are so bad so I'm going to stir lip uh, stir, stir la uh, shun s h u n s h u n um, I'm going to stir la on uh, Saturday tomorrow and I'm taking a knife skills class excited I know right me too okay so <laughs> oh did you okay yeah yeah Film crew, I know, right? Knife classes, what's next? Holy cow. So, yeah, so um, when I, I see these people on TV, and I'm like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes. Hey, Janet, it's good to see you. One of my favorite scenes ever in a movie is from a movie called The Long Kiss Goodnight. It's actually action-packed. Um, it's a little bit bloody for me. It's more bloody than my taste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to, um, yeah, lots of practice. I know. I'm excited, though, because I do get lots of practice. I'm in the kitchen every single day perfecting recipes for you guys. So, yes, I am in the kitchen a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love it, Kim. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, they're amazing knives. I'm hoping to get a couple more for Christmas, like from my parents and stuff. But they're so expensive. It's like, a knife. Woohoo! 
you know, you don't think you get that excited, but I was like stupid, stinking, crazy excited. Um, so, but yeah, so, um, but there's this movie, Long Kiss Goodnight, and there's one scene in it where it's, it's a long story, but there's a scene in it where, uh, the main character is, is chopping, uh, is chopping in the kitchen and everybody's like, oh my gosh, look at what you could do. And then she takes the knife and she throws up a tomato and throws the knife and it lands in the kitchen cupboard and she looks at her family and she says, chefs do that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh no, my gosh, I'm totally not doing that. You guys are not buying me a thing. I just love for you to be here. What do you sharpen with? Um, well, so they'll be professionally sharpened probably because I use them so much probably every month. Um, I know, right? I know that's so funny and he's bleeding all over the place. <laughs> it's like a Monty Python thing. Um, but I also keep them, yeah, knives are expensive and you should take good care of them. But mine comes with a steel. My set actually came with a steel. So, um, so yeah, so I sharpen them with the, uh, with the, the steel that they came from. So. Yeah, this is what I sharpen mine with, and they actually get sharpened every time Every time we use them. They get sharpened uh, to keep the burrs off of them. That was the recommendation by the store that we bought them in. Yeah, sweet, I know. I'm learning how to use that too, um, because um, it takes some skill. You got, it's not just like, this is how easy it is. It takes some skill to do that, to sharpen a knife, so. All right, so our liquid is getting nice and low. I say another couple minutes here, and we will be liquidless. Liquidless. Yep, I sharpened just to take the burrs off. Yep. Oh, well, I missed part of that. I'm sorry, it went away too fast. Oh, dang, gone. I know that was a long comment. I'm so sorry. Yes, it is for it is for sharpening. It's actually to get your blade flat again. So you uh, your blade will tend to bend a little bit, especially these super thin like blades, like these Japanese knives are. They are super super thin, and so you have to be a little careful with them anyway. Um, <laughs> well, okay, but maybe like a year from now when I'm good enough at it. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so they're super, they're super thin. And so it actually helps flatten the blade out and, I, and effectively sharpen it. But yes, but also it will remove some of the burrs off of it. But I will have them professionally sharpened probably every four to six weeks. So I'm not going to scope my knife skills uh, because they're terrible. I wish I could. You guys need to watch uh, Just in Time for Dinner with Roz and Scott. Um, I, I can't remember Roz. Roz, are you still here? I don't think she's still here. Um, Roz and Scott do a show every day, every weekday, just in time for dinner. And it's, I think it's like at uh, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And Scott is a chef, and he can, every once in a while, he teaches uh, knife skills and talks about knives. And I highly recommend that you try to catch their show. It's an amazing, it's amazing, amazing. So, yes. Amazing. Just in time for dinner. That's right. Hashtag just in time for dinner. For sure, for sure. Oh my gosh, it feels like it's taking forever. Uh, her name is Roz. Does anybody know Roz's handle? Man, I just know her and Scott, and I don't pay attention to their handle anymore. Um, I know their website is justintimefordinner.co. Justintimefordinner.co is their website. So, um, so maybe go check that out and see if you can find their Periscope page from there. Yeah, sorry, I have no idea. Just, just in, her name is Roz. Roz Smith. I think you'll see it pop up a lot. So you might just like search Roz and uh, and see. You'll see and check her like latest broadcast, and you'll see. Yeah, I think that's her last name, Smith. Yeah, they're they're a fabulous team. So she's the sous chef, and he's the chef, and they get in the kitchen, and she'll do one part of the recipe. They'll go off scope. He'll come back on and do another part of the recipe, and so they tag team recipes together and. Um, they're more traditional cooks than I am, so it's uh, it is a lot of health based. Like they make great. <laughs> Did I hit it? Oh no. Okay, 500 hearts. Okay, good. I'm I'm I think I'm very close to hitting 400,000 hearts. So um, okay. Well, that's I don't know what that means, but that's an opinion that you're welcome to. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, they're they're uh, they they do a great job with that. So. I would highly recommend. Oh my gosh. 
Did I get them? Woohoo! Hi, Natalie. By the way, 400,000 hearts. We're on our way to 400 or to 500,000 hearts now. And oh, awesome! <laughs> cool. Um, and we're getting close to a thousand. <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, we are getting close to a thousand viewers as well. So fabulous. So excited. Can't wait. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's funny because when people like when the crew was here, my my uh, executive producer, she was thinking she was saying, um, for, isn't that a lot of hearts? I was like, yeah, it's a fair amount of hearts. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of hearts. <laughs> I mean, I don't have like a million like some people do, but I mean, I do pretty good for scoping once a day during the week, I think, and especially on such a small topic like I have. Okay. And as soon as we get a little more water out, I'm actually going to taste this and see how we're doing with seasoning. Hi, Adrian from Fort Lauderdale. I'm happy to have you. I'm Leslie from Fort Collins. We're both in forts. You're in Fort Lauderdale. I'm in Fort Collins. I'm actually from Fort Worth. We're full of forts today. Do you ever realize how many forts there are across the nation? There's a lot of them, if you think about it, anyway. I mean, I know why they're there. I know why we call them that, but still. <laughs> I'm a goofball that way. My brain works in the most curious ways. So yes, so we're almost out of liquid. I'm going to lower my heat just a little bit more. <laughs> You're welcome, Adrian. It's good to have you. Um, so if you guys are just joining us, I am making a very untraditional uh, dressing or stuffing, whatever you call it. It's, this is actually a dressing because it's not going in the bird. Um, so I'm making a very untraditional. It has, uh, it has royal quinoa in it. It has apples. It has walnuts. It has, um, oh, Adriana, thank you, Gary. Um, it has walnuts, it has uh, squash, it has turkey sausage, it has, <laughs> do you? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Adriana, thank you, yeah. Um, yeah, make sure I say that right. So yes, so it has all kinds of amazing, I think he was just correcting me, so. <laughs> that's hilarious, Jay. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> crack me up. You crack me up. Okay, yes, try replay. So this is, we're going to make this up. I am going to leave just a tad of liquid in there. So the traditional part of this is that this actually gets cooked here and then it gets baked again. So it's like cooking it twice. But this is a great make-ahead dish because you can actually make this ahead. Put it in your baking casserole dish and then stick it in the fridge. So I'm serving this on Sunday. Um, and so I'm making it today, so it's already done. And then on Sunday, I can just pop it out of the fridge, pop it in the oven, and reheat it on a really nice low heat. And it even gives, um, it even, it even ha it's even more moist, and the flavor profiles have actually set up even better uh, because they've been sitting in the fridge. So I'm just going to grab a spoon because apparently if you cook on TV, you're not supposed to put your fingers in anything. I learned that this week. I didn't know that. So there you go. So yeah, so I'm gonna just take a quick bite here and see how we're going. And see if I need to add any spices. It's hot, super, super hot. <laughs> so let me blow on this for just a second and then I'll taste it. I know, <laughs> so we're, <laughs> I know, no judgment, right? Yes, we're gonna add those actually at the end. Absolutely, that is parsley. So we're gonna add those in the end. Um, so uh, this weekend, I was, one of the things that we did, <laughs> There's a lot of ingredients. You can actually find, you'll be able to find this recipe by weekend, Adriana, at my at my website, go to kitchens.com. G-O, the number two, kitchens, plural, dot com. So I was making sauerkraut. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I was making sauerkraut um, on one of our films that we were doing. And so um, I was just going to stick my fingers down in the bowl and just grab some out and taste it because I always taste it before I jar it. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, before I jar it, there's going to be a lot of recipes on there. One for cranberry sauce, one for green beans apparently now, and now this now this particular stuffing. So, um, no, this was just, I'm just, I just use mason jars for my kraut. Um, and this is a fermented kraut. This is not a vinegar kraut. So I was just going to stick my fingers down in the bowl and just pull some out and taste it. And my executive producer, fancy pants kraut, that's right. Um, <laughs> Jesse, that's still so funny. It cracks me <laughs> Anything fancy pants now just cracks me up. So I, I start to do that and she's like, oh my gosh, no, you can't do that. And I was like, well, then we're not like 
full, you can edit it out. And she's like, no. And she runs over and gets me a spoon. She's like, you have to get out of that habit right now. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So apparently I just can't put my finger in there and I can't put my spoon back in there either. I'm like, they're not eating it on TV. What's the problem? But anyway, can't do that. So we're going to taste it and see how we go. In one bite, I get all the flavors because they've infused in that cooking time period. So the cooking liquid, I just got some apple and some walnut, the quinoa. I really want to taste the sausage, so there's just a little bit of heat. So hold on, I got to pull some sausage out of here. It's fabulous. You would never miss dressing in all your life. Oh, hot. Melanie, I didn't know you were on here. I just called you out. So funny. I know. I didn't know. Who knew? It'll taste even better on Sunday. It absolutely is going to be amazing on Sunday. So, oh, <laughs> I know. She doesn't cook with her hair up. That's right. I agree totally. She doesn't cook with her hair up. I'm not, I'm not cooking with my hair up. I actually, look, I'll show you guys. I actually don't like my hair up. My head looks really huge. When I pull my hair back, I feel like my... <laughs> Can I taste, right? I wish you could. I feel like that my head is the size of this pot when I pull my hair back. So very rarely do I have my hair back. Very, very rarely do I do. I mean, if it's a requirement, I'm kind of screwed. But um, Yes, I actually don't make that much crowd at one time. Um, and we don't eat it that fast. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I can't stand my hair up. I've just, I've just never been a big ponytail girl, so. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's true. Do a little bump. Boop. I could. Yeah. Okay, so from here, this is going to go into a baking casserole um, that's covered. We're going to put that. Your head is huge. I know, it is. <laughs> I do have a huge head. I'm telling you, I really do have a big head. Like, when I go to buy, like, baseball caps or caps or something, um, they do not fit on my head. Like, the traditional, I have to go buy a guy's one because my head's so big. So, thank you. That's so sweet, Kimberly. Your sweetheart. Um, so this is going to go into a uh, casserole dish that has a cover. You could just cover it with plastic, quite frankly. But it's going to go into a casserole dish, and then it is going into my fridge. And then on um, and then on the weekend, on Sunday when I'm ready to cook it, and I forgot to add the parsley. <laughs> Gary, you knew I would, right? My brother-in-law totally called me out and said, don't forget the fresh herbs in the background. Oh, okay, I won't. You could actually add the parsley when it's after it's baked but I just add it in right now it's gonna lose a little bit of its color but it's not a huge it's not a huge deal and I should have added it earlier but I didn't so this by the way I just put in <laughs> sorry I'm way off here I just put in uh, about half a cup of rough cut flat leaf parsley makes it really pretty too here and I'll show you guys the finished product well the it'll be cooked again but it's totally edible right now but you can, I'm going to, I'm going to actually bake it again. Look at that. Yeah. So once all the water, you can see, I have, a, you probably can't see, but I have just a little bit of liquid in the bottom and that's good for the baking part of this. So I have just a little bit, I know so good. Here, let me put it on a spoon and see if you can see it that way. Better. Look at that. Yummy cuns. Ouch. Hot. Sorry. Hot, hot. I know. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And you have the volume as if you were using bread and all that kind of jazz. You have the volume. You have the color. Um, <laughs> you have the color of the um, of the dressing. So it looks like it looks like dressing or stuffing. You could actually stuff your bird with this if you were so inclined after it's already cooked. You could actually stuff your bird with it. The sausage gives it a little bit of a spicy bite. Um, it's, it's an amazing recipe. I really, really like it. So I actually took it from another recipe and it is very moist and it's super yummy. Um, and you could add more herbs to it to make it taste more like dressing if you were, if you wanted to do that. Um, 
but the sausage gives it that oomph that you're probably looking for. So yeah, super great recipe. So in a casserole dish, back in the oven, I will put it on a low setting, probably below 300, and I will let it cook again in that baking dish until it's warm in the center. So probably between 15, no, probably 20 to 35 minutes, um, I will let it cook so that it's warm through again. Um, one thing that you can do with it that actually really ramps up the favor profiles again um, is you can take a little bit of pecorino or parmesan cheese and just grate it lightly, just a soft grate and it'll melt into the dish. And so that top layer that you get will have that melted uh, cheese in there. You can or can't do that, that's up to you. So I actually will bake it on Sunday. It will go in my refrigerator and sit there and all the flavors will all soak together and be amazing. <laughs> And then I'll put it, and then I'll put it in the oven on Sunday um, while I am while I'm doing other things. So yeah, actually everything that I'm making on Sunday is I've made ahead of time. I made cranberry sauce yesterday. I'm making this today. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna try to make the sweet potato souffle. Um, and then the green beans. Actually, I have the green beans prepped. They're ready to be cooked, but that is something I will have to make that day. So I take that back. But everything else has been make ahead, and somebody else is bringing the turkey. I think somebody's bringing the rolls, and so yeah. Although I don't, eat, I won't eat them, but yeah. So there you go. So then you have a friendsgiving. We have a friends. If you missed that part of it, we have a. <laughs> oh, this thing? No, you're not being nosy. It's a bubble light. Can you see that? No, you can't see it very well. Here, I'll pull it over here. My husband. I, you can freeze this. You could absolutely, if you wanted to wait till Thursday next week, I totally messed up my hair. But if you if you wanted to wait till Thursday next week, I would, and you were going to cook this ahead, this far in advance, I would actually, like a week ahead of time, I would actually put that in the freezer. So yeah. So this is my, uh, this is my husband's actually. Um, he had these growing up on his Christmas tree. And my mom gave us one as a nightlight. And so we just keep it in our kitchen year round. It is a bubble. You have one too. Yeah. So Gary, that's my brother-in-law. So my husband and my brother-in-law had these apparently growing up on their tree. And so, um, so we just keep ours in the, in the nightlight, uh, year round. I think it's so funny that you guys look in the background, man, I better make sure that I'm like, don't have any like cookies back there or anything. <laughs> really? It's just my fiesta wear and some of my platters and my cup and my bananas and my spice jar that has all kinds of spices in it nosy no I'm kidding you're not being nosy at all I don't mind you can ask me anything you want I mean unless it's something nasty then you get blocked but <laughs> I know I love Fiesta too it's so practical it's the most practical cookware on the planet I love Fiesta so if you guys go over <laughs> if you go over and become a VIP and go to the you'll get a link back to the Facebook VIP it's called the VIP lounge uh, the go to kitchens VIP lounge if you go do that <laughs> I know right yeah like cookies and bread and all kinds of stuff yeah um, no you just see my like you know bananas that need to be eaten pretty soon so but if you go over and, and and click on that link become a VIP get on the mailing list become a VIP on Sunday in the newsletter I'm actually gonna reveal why I have been with the film crew all week um, and then at the VIP page you get all kinds of finished product so you'll be able to see this that I made today you'll be able to see this as it goes into the casserole ready to bake because it looks the same when it comes out and it's been baked quite frankly so um, but you'll get to see that um, you will get to see recipes first sometimes I share recipes over there that on the VIP page that are proprietary to that page if you click on the files in the Facebook page you can actually see 10 holiday sugar-free desserts you get a whole recipe book that are 10 sugar-free desserts so the VIPs get exclusive information that I don't share any else so yeah <laughs> I do I do I have ways no um these are actually pretty much smoothie bananas so if they get too far gone uh, um both of us eat a banana a day and so but if they get too far gone then I just freeze them and use them in smoothies so they become smoothie bananas I actually like my fruit frozen because I don't like to add ice to my smoothies because it waters it down I don't want it to be watered down but I still want that slushy taste so we do a lot of frozen fruit so no so if it gets too far they'll just go in the freezer but never wasted ever 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 if it if it went actually too far I'd probably do like a grain free um, banana bread or something like that I mean I just don't yeah yeah, and you can actually use the banana peels too. I don't know if you know, but yeah, same here. You freeze them. Yeah, 
Um, but banana peels are actually awesome cleaners. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but you can clean your sink with a banana peel. Just put your hand, just rub the, uh, the outside of it and it'll take off scuff marks in the sink, especially if you have a porcelain sink. It'll take off hard water stains. It does all kinds of things. Banana peels are kind of amazing, but that's a whole, I know, that's a whole nother crazy topic right there. I know, things you can do with a banana and show on scope. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's because I drink some of the apple juice, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, goodness gracious, goodness gracious. <laughs> so, oh, it's my face red. <laughs> Sometimes I say things that probably shouldn't be said, but that there you go. There they, there they are. <laughs> it's live. You get what you get. All right, so if you were watching this scope uh, to learn how to make this stuffing that I just made, um, I stopped making it a long time ago and I've been shooting the bull. Um, but now is the time on our show. <laughs> is now is the time on my show where I like to throw down some information, uh, some inspirational. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, I like to give you some inspirational thoughts to go through your day with, and I know it's halfway over, but anyway, I like for you guys to sit and think about uh, things that are healthy and good for your brain. Everything that I share with you are thoughts that I'm thinking for myself, so they all apply to my life and what's happening and going on right now. If you're leaving us, please go out and check go to kitchens.com. G-O, the number two, kitchens.com, uh, plural, by the way. Please go check it out. If you want to become a VIP, I would absolutely love that so we can continue our conversation over at the Facebook page, which is crazy nuts over there anyway. So that's where I talked on my VIPs without being on scope, and you can actually talk back to me. Um, well, you can hear, but it's different over there. So, yes, so here's my point of inspiration today. <laughs> if I can stop laughing. <laughs> How about we just talk about laughter because it's really good for you. <clears throat> no, seriously. Um, I have, I, this morning, <laughs> this morning I had, um, I had a moment to myself to think about everything that has happened. Oh, you're just in time for the inspiration. It is very therapeutic. Absolutely. And I must be in, I must be very therapeutic because I've, I'm in therapy all the time because I'm laughing all the time. It's hard to keep me down. So, um, But this morning I had a, a moment to reflect on what is going on with my life, what's going on with my business, what's going on with my family. And I realized that there are major ups and downs in life, you know. And when you're down, it's your job to find out um, where it starts going up again. And it's your job to have a takeaway from that down moment. So let me give you an example. I had breast cancer two and a half years ago. My down moment was that breast cancer is pretty damn serious. And I was freaked out. I was totally freaked out. I didn't know, I thought my life was over. I thought I was dying. I have cancer. I know people who have died of cancer and I'm gonna die. And that's what I thought. And I was oppressed with that for about two months. I thought that my life was over. I thought I had spent my last Christmas. I thought I, when I went on vacation during, after my diagnosis. I thought that that was my last vacation with my husband. I mean, I was really down and out about it. It was really bad because I had a pretty serious type of cancer. It was small, but it was just really serious. And so, um, so I was really down and that was a big down point. At some point, I needed to start trending up again. And life is like this. You're going to have these major peaks and valleys. I mean, for most of us, it's just like this. But sometimes it's way up here and sometimes it's way down here. And so I was way down here. And a friend gave me a book by Chris Carr, A Crazy Sexy Diet. Thank you so much for inviting followers. That means a lot to me. Um, but I, 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 um, I read a book by Chris Carr, a friend, my very best friend, uh, Jennifer Davey. She's on here sometimes. Anyway, um, she gave me a book by Chris Carr, and she's like, you know, I don't know why I bought, I didn't even know why I bought this like a year ago, but it's been sitting on my bookshelf, and I haven't even read it, but maybe you want to read it, because I think she's a cancer survivor, and I was like, okay. So at that point, I was just a big old sponge trying to learn everything I could about what was happening inside of my body. I'd already started that part of the journey. And so I read the book, still sitting in fear, still terrified out of my mind of a lot of things, of 
you know, of being bald, quite frankly, of losing my sense of balance, because they say when you do chemo that you lose your sense of balance, of having chemo brain, where my brain would not function uh, at, at the capacity that I'm used to it. I mean, there was a lot of fears, fear of dying, fear of losing my breast, fear of having mutilated breast, fear of them having to take my ovaries and my uterus because it might, I might test for a gene that says that they need to do that. I mean, it was a lot, it was a lot to think about. And so I spiraled for about two months. My friend gave me this book. I read the book. I was about, I can't even remember now. I need to look because I reference this a lot. I need to look at the book and have a, a point of reference. But I was reading the book and Chris Carr is a cancer, well, she lives with cancer in her body. Uh, she's been managing it. It's been like nine, 10, 12 years now that she's been living with major amounts of cancer and she is a spitfire, this woman. She has the energy of 10 men. She just goes and goes and goes. And I was reading this book and she's like talking about being the CEO of her, I know she is amazing, um, of being the CEO of her cancer. And so, and, and taking that stance with her doctors and taking that stance with her families and taking that stance mentally inside of her. And I was like, I can relate to that because I'm sick of, quite frankly, I'm sick of getting pushed around and being scared to death by my doctors. Now my doctors were amazing, but they had the pants scared off of me. I was terrified. And so this was a very low point, but to find my start on the rise again, I needed something to jumpstart me. And this, yes, CEO over cancer. It's an awesome, I wish I could take credit for that. And I can't people quote me all the time. And I'm like, that's not me. I did not say that. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble by her, but it's an amazing, an amazing quality that she has. Yes, very inspirational. She was my inspiration. So I started thinking, uh, she started talking about foods that heal the body and, you know, and, and, and what she decided to do, which was nothing, pretty much. She decided she denied all treatment uh, because even her oncologist said, I don't, even if we treat you, I don't think it's going to help. I think it's just going to make you sicker. And so lucky her to get an oncologist like that. So she started finding out ways to heal her body. And uh, she went on this amazing journey to find out ways to clear, to clear her body and to fortify her body to manage cancer inside of her body. And she has successfully done this for many years now. And so she manages it as she, as anybody would manage a disease, uh, diabetes, fibromyalgia, uh, you know, all of these diseases that we have. She manages cancer like that and she does it with food. And I thought, well, you know, excuse my language, but shit fire, if Chris Carr can do it, I can totally do that. And so <laughs> I, I closed the book. I just closed it. CEO of my cancer, CEO. I am the CEO of my cancer. And so, <laughs> yes. And so it's just like managing other diseases, if you think about it that way. So I am the CEO of this cancer and it is not getting me down and I am going to get through this. The whole time, even from the moment I was diagnosed, this will make me cry. I'm not crying today. This will make, this typically makes me cry, but I need to try to get through it without crying because I have a feeling at some point I'm going to be talking to hundreds of people about this story. And so, but at that point, I realized that, or not actually, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I had this very strong emotion that I had it for a reason, and I needed to find out what that reason was, but I was too, fear, I was too fearful to address it at first. When I read this book, I began to realize what my reason was. And so, awesome. Yes, that's awesome. I love that, Meg. Um, and so, <laughs> Spitfire, that's right. And so I decided that I would, um, that I would start seeking a path that was right for me. I don't care what somebody else's opinion is. It's good to see you, Green. I don't care what somebody else's opinion is. I don't care what even really kind of what my doctor says. I mean, I did, I did take, I married the two actually. I married holistic medicine with Western medicine and made it right for me. But this was my cancer journey. So don't think, you know, don't take that and run with it. This was just what was right for me, and I did a lot of soul searching to figure that out. So I ended up having the cancer removed, had it out, had the cancer removed, so that's where the medical, that's where the Western medicine comes in. I was actually talked into by my naturopath to do radiation. I did six weeks of radiation. I soared through it because at this point, after you have to heal a little bit before 
That's right. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yes. So um, you have to heal from the surgery before you can start radiation. So I had to heal completely. I actually took an extra three weeks to heal because I wanted to, my body to be super ready for what was about to happen with it in radiation because I knew it could be a takedown if I allowed it. But at this point, um, between my surgery and my um, and my radiation, I had already started my health journey and I had already started fortifying my body. Actually, about two weeks before that I had started. I went through surgery with flying colors. I was at work the next day. <laughs> I had breast surgery, it was outpatient. I had breast surgery, I was at work the next day working as if nothing had happened. Um, and I did bruise and it was kind of crazy and whatever, but I was at work the next day and my body was like, thank you, we love you. Thank you for taking care of us. Finally, you're taking care of me, you know? And so I started fortifying myself with food and I started paying attention. I started being mindful of every single piece of food that went in my mouth. Now then, here comes another low point <laughs> because I started stressing about every single piece of food that went in my mouth and I became a stress cadet. I was a total stress cadet about food and that was more unhealthy than probably the food I was eating before cancer. So, <laughs> so I had to pull back a little bit. I had to pull back a little bit. So that was another little bit of a down and then, yep, yeah, and then everybody's been there that's on a health journey and then I started up again. So two years after my cancer, almost two years to the day, actually, um, actually within, within, it was two years and 10 days um, from my cancer diagnosis, I was sitting at dinner with friends and we were talking, they were, they were actually praising me for all the changes because I do friends dinners a lot and they were all praising me for all of these great choices I was making and how it was like the only healthy meal that they got in the week because <laughs> when they came to eat with me and they loved it and your food is so good and it's so simple, but it's so good. And it's, you know, and it, we've, we've cooked some recipes and it's so easy. One of my friends said, I had just gotten a GoPro and she said, you should take your GoPro. GoPro and make videos and share them with us so that we could so that we could watch you cook because they were never here when I was cooking I already had it ready when they got here I was like that's a really fun idea and it the light bulb went off I mean that very instant the light bulb went off and I was like this this is what I'm supposed to do this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to teach people what I know. I'm supposed to teach people what I've learned this last two years. I'm supposed to teach people to fall in love with their kitchens again. I'm supposed to teach people how to cook with whole real foods and 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 enjoy them and not be freaked out that they don't have any flavor and that they're hard to do and that you gotta do this and you gotta do that and you can't eat this and you can't eat that. And so bingo, Go To Kitchens was born. It actually started out as GoPro Kitchen. <laughs> so, and then I thought GoPro is probably gonna sue me. Um, so, so we changed it to go to kitchens and I actually adopted the format of going to people's kitchens and actually cooking with them. So low, low, low cancer, low, 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 very, very, very low point in my life. The, the darkest I've ever been really dark. Yes. Whole real foods. That's right. Whole Real Foods, very, very dark point of my life. Um, and then starting the climb up, starting the two-year climb up, getting healthier than I've ever been in my entire life, despite the cancer. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Going to the doctor for my regular checkups, my regular sonograms on my breast, and having the doctor say to me, let's look at your sonogram from your cancer diagnosis and look at your sonogram now. Your breast tissue is so much more healthy than it was. What? How can that be? I asked her, I said, how can that be? And she's like, it's your diet. It's what you're doing. It's the clean living. Your breast tissue actually looks like the breast tissue of a 25 year old. What? Crazy. I was just like, oh, this stuff works. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. I love that. <clears throat> this actually works. And so I continue, I still, to this day, I continue to get more and more and more and more healthy. My body at 45 is way better than it was at 35. I mean, I look younger now, I think, than I did at 35. I think I'm doing way better. I mean, I'm, I have more energy. I have more desire. I have more purpose. I have more everything. And that came from the lowest point of my life. This huge, this huge thing. So then this week, this is a long inspiration, I apologize. So then this week, I start realizing the dream. This week, I have a film crew with me. And again, I'll tell the VIPs this weekend. I can't tell a lot of people, so go become a VIP so I can tell you. Um, <laughs> but 
But, um, but yeah, so this week I start filming with uh, go to kitchens has only been born since January of this year. Okay. And we, here we are in, uh, in November and we already have a film crew with us. That's how powerful the story is. That's how powerful real food is. That's how much people are looking for something different. That's how people are realizing that they need to make a change because you're looking and you're seeking. So congratulations to all of you, first of all, that are either have already started your health journey and are way, some of you are way ahead of me even. Um, congratulations to you for making a good choice. If you are just starting your health journey, congratulations for watching a Periscope like this and trying to make changes. Changes. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, the ultimate goal is an empire, Maria. <laughs> that's the goal. That's the ultimate. I want Go To Kitchens to be a household name. I want people to. I want it to be undeniable that cooking is not hard. That cooking is easy. So. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> I, I don't, I just, I talk, I, I only talk about food in the sense of real whole food. So things that are good for you. So I know, yeah, an empire. That's right. I'm building an empire and with the, my work colleagues that I have, um, in a mastermind, I always tell them building an empire is hard. I keep saying that and they think it's really funny. So I'll say it to you guys, building an empire is hard because I work my tail end off. I mean, I work 16, 17, 18 <laughs> hours a day. Um, yes. And that is actually going to be part of what I talked to the VIPs about Maria is, uh, is helping me get there. So Maria, you need to go, come, if you haven't yet, go become a VIP so we can talk over there in the VIP page. Um, so yes. So really I just, instead of being in your face about here's what helps, I mean, I, cause legally I can't say this cures cancer or this helps cancer, but what I, <laughs> I do. I need a house cleaner is what I need. Um, but what I can do is I can, I can show you recipes that if you are cooking my recipes, trust me, um, you are on a path of not ever getting cancer in the first place. So awesome. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yay. Woohoo. Thank you guys. Um, so, but but I, 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 if you're cooking the recipes, you are, you are on a path. I am going to Periscope Summit. I absolutely am. I actually put in a actually put in a request to be a speaker so I could tell them a little bit about how powerful Periscope is and what it can do for you based on the short amount of time that I have been here. Because I would love I would love to be able to share that with that community because it's I think it's super powerful. So um, <clears throat> no, I don't overwork myself. I love what I do. I mean, I absolutely, I absolutely adore what I do, but thank you for that concern. And I do need to be reminded every once in a while to slow down a little bit. So, <clears throat> oh good. You have to go. You guys, if you go to Periscope Summit, please find me. I'm not hard to miss. I'm only about this tall. First of all, people always think I'm tall and I'm not, I'm about this tall. And, uh, and I mean the dark hair, you can't mess, you can't, you can't miss that. So, um, but yes, I do, I, I'm working harder than I've ever worked in my entire life. Good. Yes. Please stalk me. I'll try to stalk you as well. Um, that would be awesome to connect. I'm super, I'm super excited about January. I can't wait. I'm like holidays. Let's go. I want it to be January. Um, <laughs> so, but yes, it is, it is true that, uh, you need to take care of yourself and I am working harder than I've ever worked. And sometimes I find myself losing track of, especially like my exercise, like I'll put it off. Um, <laughs> Awesome, Natalie. I'm glad to know that you're in my my big head, little people tribe. Uh, <laughs> you'll look like that. Okay, yeah, I can find that. That's what you look like. That's good. It's a good tip. Um, but yeah, so turning those super lows into super highs are it's possible. And just remember when you're in your super lows that there is going to be super high again. So don't. Don't fret. Don't don't wallow. Don't stagnate. Don't look for. Start looking for the up. You know. Start looking. I call it the light. So start looking towards the light. Start finding your light. That's what I had to do. I had to start finding the light and had to start trending back up. And as I started trending back up, yeah, it's taken me a couple of years. But then you get to a point like this and you're like, holy cow, cancer was my blessing. Thank God I had cancer. I mean. Really? How many people can say that? But I really do feel that way. Thank God I had cancer. <laughs> it's changed my life in a lot of ways. If none of this was happening, if none of this was happening, I would still be grateful for my cancer because it put me on a path to whole real foods. So, and my husband, my husband is older than I am. He's 62. 
and put him on a path to whole real foods. So huge turning point. Absolutely. Yes, you cannot have light. I mean, well, um, light will always penetrate the darkness. You cannot have darkness. If you turn on a light, it's going to penetrate that darkness. So that is always just my go-to. That's my kind of my mantra is that if it's dark, I need to turn on the light. <laughs> if you don't like the darkness, then just turn on the light. And so, and that works from within us as well. So yes, in fact, that's going to be my post tomorrow. I just got my point of inspiration for tomorrow. If you don't like the darkness, then turn on the light. It's that simple. Uh, <laughs> I know, I have young trophy wife, I know. I think, actually, doesn't think of me that way. That's good, but yes, I am the young wife. He's kind of the trophy, though. Not me. He's the trophy. <laughs> yes, that's right. Turn on your Christmas lights. That's right. As beautiful as they are. You like it? Okay. <laughs> All right. I have to go, too, actually. Um, I, I have a lot, a lot to do today. So, so you guys, thanks for all of you that were here. Thank you for going over and uh, becoming VIPs. I saw we are all trophies. I agree. If you're, it's absolutely true. Everybody was put here for a purpose, and it's just up to you to discover what it is. And it may just be to influence one person's life on one day. That could be the very reason why you were put here. <laughs> so just embrace that. Embrace every second of every day. It's so powerful when you do that. So. Um, yes, so I need to scat as well. <laughs> yes, you're you're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. I wanted to be sure that you guys are thinking about these sorts of things. So I have to be reminded. I was reminded right in my face this week about that. So this may be my longest scope ever. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. Holy cow. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the hearts. Thanks for getting us over 400,000. Amazing. We're going to hit a thousand followers. Amazing. Just a few short weeks, so. <laughs> I did not get the sweet potato. Okay, I haven't looked at my Twitter. I'll go look. My sweet potato horns tweet. How funny. That cracks me up. I did it for my husband. He was standing in the kitchen. I was like, can you believe I just did this on Periscope? And I did it for him, and he cracked up. He was like, that is so funny looking. <laughs> I'll go look. No, I'm going to go look. At Go To Kitchens, I'm going to go look. All right. You guys, thank you guys for your time this afternoon. Thank you for being here. You guys have hung out for a long time. Know that I love you and that I only want you to be healthy. And I mean that from the very bottom of my little big headed tiny person heart. Um, so, so you guys go out and have an amazing day today. Remember to be mindful. Remember to be mindful about those around you and realize that you're a human being on this planet and that you share this little bitty planet with all of these people. So, <laughs> so please go out, smile at a stranger, maybe the only smile that they see today and, uh, and go eat something healthy. I need to go eat. I'm so hungry. <laughs> it smells so good and I'm starving. So go out and smile at a stranger today and go eat something healthy and take care of you. All right. Love ya, and I'll see you on Monday for sure. But I have a couple things I want to scope this weekend. You'll just have to try to catch me when I'm around. There's no time schedule. So, all right, see you then.